so I have a different kind of way I teach than, than maybe you're used to in Sunday school, but I, I kind of base it on the way Jesus taught. Jesus taught in a lot of parables. Do you guys know what parables are? Lessons. Lessons, that's one way of thinking about it. Anybody else know what a, can describe what a parable is? What's a parable? Kind of like a riddle. Kind of like a riddle, a little bit. There's a message tied into it that maybe isn't obvious at first. You have to think about it a little bit more. Everyday things that turns into lessons. And, yeah, can you, can you guys name any of the parables that Jesus did? Fish and bread. Fish and bread. Now, that wasn't necessarily a parable. That really happened. The multiplication, when he turned the five loaves and the two fish and fed thousands, that wasn't a parable. I've actually stood in the spot where they think that that happened. That actually happened. So that's not a parable. That was a miracle. Very different. Wouldn't you still be hungry if he took a fish that it was probably about a fish that big? I, I and thought, thousands of people. I thought they just like cut it. Probably not. Tiny All right, you gotta, raise, you gotta raise your hand if you want to talk. The ones with the seeds or they threw it on the rocky soil. The sword. parable of the sower. One of my favorite ones. Are there any farmers in here? You guys do any farming? So you understand the parable of the sower, right? Mm -hmm. You don't throw your seed out on concrete. Nothing's going to grow. You don't throw your seed out where there's a bunch of weeds. It's going to get all tore up. You find the good soil, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a parable that Jesus taught. There, that wasn't an actual story that happened to him. There was a, a fictional story, a made-up story, that taught a bigger lesson, right? Jamie, what time do I need to be done here so I make sure I don't use up all? Uh, probably about 1035 is the latest. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus I mean, did sorry, that all 1135. 1135. Jesus did that all the time. He used stories about fictional things to convey a much deeper message. And they were all things that the group then understood. And so he talked, uh, anybody know the parable of the workers? I'm going to talk about it a little bit longer. No? Not even, anybody have a job in here yet? <laughs> no! So the parable of the workers isn't necessarily a story that you guys can understand because you're not workers yet. And a lot of Jesus' stories were pointed at people 2,000 years ago that didn't have iPhones, didn't have movies, didn't have stuff like that. So the parables were never about iPhones because they didn't exist. So I like to teach a lot the same way. Has everybody here had pancakes? Oh, yeah. Anybody knows what a pancake is? Anybody never had a pancake in their life? Okay, and you guys ought to understand the parable of the pancakes then, right? <laughs> Well, I'll make sure of this. I don't want to teach a lesson that you can't relate to at all. What about movies? Do you guys like movies? I like movies. You mentioned that you went to see two last night. They were, uh, what were they again? Pirates of the Caribbean. What's Pirates of the Caribbean rated? You don't even know? Um, I know it's not PG-13. PG-13. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. PG-13? Don't care what it's in anymore. I watch Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants? It was a good movie. Are there any movies out there that you want to see? Like right now, Captain Underpants? What else? Anything else out there? Yeah, the new Star Wars movie. New Star Wars? That's not even, that comes out later this year, right? So Wonder Woman? Anybody seen Wonder Woman? No. Abby, it was it's good? It was good. It was weird. That was great. DC, man. I'm a huge Marvel fan, but I can't get into the DC I ones at all. Like, like, it just started getting really confusing. And also, there was a Spider Man commercial. Yeah, which is kind of weird because he's in the Marvel ones, too. That's weird. You guys like the Marvel just, movies? Spider Man! Yeah. He's the Spider Man! Best. What's your favorite Marvel movie? Spider Man. Spider Man. I like uh, Civil War, was my favorite. I love Spider Civil War. Yeah. Anybody see Deadpool? No, no, no. I don't know. You saw Deadpool? How old are you? 13. Thirteen. What's your name? Preston. 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 Will you be the uh will you be part of my story today? Yes. It's a parable. You don't want to be part of my story today? Yeah, you will. Preston. Jay was part of my story earlier. Yeah, Jay, you want to be part of my story? You don't have to do anything. You sure you don't want to be part? I'll do it. Have you ever have you seen Deadpool? No. No? John Wick? Hey, you know what movies he's seen a lot of? Mm. Halloween movies. What? What are they rated? R. R. And how old are you? Twelve. Oh. I'm sorry. I'll take my husband. I have my husband that is in the four movies. I'm sorry. I really want to use Deadpool. Preston, you sure? 
All right, does anybody else want to be the subject of my story for Deadpool? Anybody else want to see Deadpool? Uh, you want to see Deadpool? Owen, right? Yeah. Owen's going to be the... Yeah, but you it. haven't seen Deadpool, right? Seen All right, let's start our story. I want to see the fight scene. The what? I want to see the fight scene. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let me do my story, and we're going to talk at the end, okay? Once upon a time. Every good story starts with once upon a time, right? Except for Star Wars. <laughs> Long ago in the galaxy, far, far away, and it doesn't fit for today. Once upon a time, there was a Bible teacher. We're going to call him Mr. Mike. That may or may not be his real name. He was good looking, I hear. Right? He was really good looking, really buff, super strong. All the guys wanted to be like him. The girls were like, oh, he's so dreamy. He gave him pancakes. Really, really good teacher. In the land of pancakes. In the land of pancakes. Yes. Mr. Mike comes into class one day, and one of the students, we'll call him Owen. Yeah. May or may not be his name. This is a parable. Owen comes into class. He comes up to Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike. My parents won't let me see Deadpool. Will you please talk to them and let me tell them to let me see it? Like, oh, and Deadpool, man, I'm hearing some crazy things about that movie. I, I don't know. What's that movie rated? It's rated R. And how old are you? Uh, I'm, how are you, Owen? I know it's not you. It's hypothetical. But how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. What does rated R stand for? Do you guys know what rated R stands for? Well, it stands for something. It stands for restricted. And it's restricted to anyone under, actually, it's the age of 17. I didn't believe that, but I have a 17-year-old daughter who pointed it out that it's not 18, it's 17, which I'm upset about. <laughs> restricted. Like, do you know what that means? That means that people out in California who are already a little bit nutty, even they think that someone under the age of 17 shouldn't see this movie. And yet you want me to go talk to your parents about the movie Deadpool? Are you crazy? Oh, Mr. Mike, come on. All my friends are seeing it. I'm going to be the only guy in my class that doesn't see this movie. So, well, why, Mr. Mike asked him, why do you think that they made that movie rated R? Okay, well, I know that there's some bad stuff in there, but it's all stuff I've seen before. What kind of bad stuff? Well, there's some bad language. I know there's some bad language. I know there's going to be some violence in there, and, and I hear there's some sexuality in there, but I, I'm, you know, I'm very mature for my age. I'm a very mature 11. I can handle it. I've heard those words before. I got an older brother. He says them. What did I tell you, Tyron? <laughs> but not me. I can tell the difference. I know that I'm not supposed to say those words, and I know I'm not supposed to be violent towards others, and I, I don't even want to talk about girls. I can handle it. And Mr. Mike, anyway, there's all these good things in the movie Deadpool. It's a movie about fighting for what you believe in. It's a movie about bravery. In this particular character, he can't even be killed. And it's just like you're always talking about that we're going to live forever in these bodies that will have no harm. And we need not be afraid. He's not afraid. And so there's all these good things in the movie. And just, you know, just a little bit of bad things. Battle, I need you to bring it down. So in my class, I had this thing. Jay, okay? remember? If I snap and point at the kids in my class, they know that it means to go over there and crank out 10 push-ups. And they only laugh like twice because when you get to like 30 push-ups, it starts to hurt. So let's not do that. Eh, we don't want to do that. Let me teach and then we'll talk. So Owen is trying to convince Mr. Mike of all the good things that are in the movie Deadpool. Mr. Mike says, I don't know. I, I don't really feel comfortable with this, but give me, give me a week to think about it, to pray about it. And we'll talk again next week. <clears throat> so the next week, uh, Owen comes into class, and immediately, as soon as he walks through the door, he's just overwhelmed with the smell of pancakes. Walks through the door, and he hears the sizzling going on. Mr. Mike's dressed up in an apron, cooking pancakes, and Owen walks through the door, and he's like, Oh my gosh, that smells so good, Mr. Mike. What's going on? Are we having a picnic today? Is there? Is it a party today? Mr. Mike says, well, sort of. It's a party for you, Owen. He's like, what? It's not my birthday. It's, it's, you know, it's not a holiday. What's going on? Why, why, why are we doing this? I said, well, Owen, I, I thought a lot about what you asked me last week. And as a matter of fact, I, uh, I, I talked to your parents and... Uh, I got a deal for 
Talk to your parents. It's all okay with them. I'm going to take you to go see Deadpool. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm serious. I'm, I'm going to take you to go see Deadpool, and uh, I'm going to pay for the whole thing. I'm going to pay for both of our tickets. I kind of didn't want to see it. I, I didn't think I was going to go see it, but, but now I'm, I'm going to take you to go see this movie. I'm going to pay for the tickets. I'm going to pay for the popcorn. I'm going to pay for the drinks. I'm going to buy you all the candy that you want to eat all on me. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. I, th you're the best. You were the best before, but now you're really the best. This is great. Well, Owen, there, there's a deal involved here, and I need to tell you about the deal. See, I'm going to do all of those things for you, but what I need you to do for me is eat this stack of pancakes. And Owen's like, done! Dude, I love pancakes. I missed breakfast this morning. They smell so good. I'm in. Count me in. Mr. Mike says, well, hold on just a minute. I need to tell you everything about these pancakes before you decide whether or not you're going to take the deal or not. See, I, have, I take my pancakes very, very seriously. I am known all across the city of Franklin for my pancakes. People will show up at my house. Hmm? The people from all over Pancake Land will show up for this thing that we call Cafe Bernard because I'm really good at it. Anybody ever been to Pancake Pantry in Nashville? Pretty good, right? Those are the only pancakes on the planet that I think are better than mine. And I'm working on it. I've, I'm, I've already passed Cracker Barrel. I haven't quite caught Pancake Pantry, but I'm working on it. He's working on it. Sorry. Mr. Vice says, I take my pancakes very, very seriously. I only use the best ingredients. You guys ever had Jiffy Mix by any chance? Yeah. I've tried every mix there is. And Jemima, Bisquick, you name it, I've tried it. By far, Jiffy Baking Mix makes the best pancakes on the planet. Real eggs. Now, some of these mixes, all you do is put water in there, mix them up, and that's pancakes. No, 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 no. You've got to have real eggs. I even went and got like the expensive brownings because I don't want to mess around with them. Milk. Who, water. You can't put water and expect really good pancakes. You've got to use real milk in there. But uh, butter. Butter's, butter makes everything better. That's like my, my, my patented phrase. Butter makes everything better. you got to use real butter, not margarine, not any of that goofy stuff. It's got to be real butter. And then, of course, the chocolate chips. Does everybody like chocolate chips in their pancakes? Yeah. Don't skimp on the chocolate chips. It's got to be the best chocolate chips in the world, the Nestle Toll House morsels, right? So all these good things, and Owen's over there, and he's like, oh, my God, it sounds so good. It smells so good. It even it, it looks good. Everything. I'm in, Mr. Mike. I'm in. Woo! Mr. Mike says, I feel like I need to tell you everything. That's, that's in the pancakes before you make that decision. You see, I've got these three dogs. Big one, little one, maybe medium sized one. I take them for walks, and my neighbors really hate when I don't pick up after my dogs. And so I, I gotta do something with the do, right? You gotta do, do with the do, right? And so there's, there's one last ingredient in these pancakes that I feel I ought to tell you about. Is a uh, is a little bit of doggy do in the pancake. Oh, a little bit there. Might have got a little bit too much there, so we're just gonna cover that up with a little bit of batter. There you go. And Owen sort of gives Mr. Mike the same look. That, what's your name? Riley. Riley. Kind of gives the same look. He's like, ah. Like, that's not real dog poo, right? Tell, tell me that's not real dog poo. You just took some Snickers bars and like chewed them up and and made them look like dog poo, right? No, no. All the other ingredients are are authentic and genuine. And so are these, bro. I'm sorry, no, that, that's real dog poo. No one's even gonna ask. I, you guys. My class is always, there's always somebody, and I thought it would have been you. It's like, that's not real dog poo. You're just messing with us. Nobody wants to, no, you guys just all trust me? Is it the grass? I just cut my grass yesterday, too, so there's a little bit of grass in there. That's fine. You guys just trust me, huh? You're a very trusting bunch. So anyway, 
Owen's looking at him like he's crazy. Like, okay, that's the deal, bro. You eat the stack of pancakes, we go to the movie. Are you in? Owen's like, no, I'm not in. Are you nuts? I'm not eating that. Why not? Because it's poo. Yeah, but think about, don't think about the little bit of yuckiness that's in there. I want you to think about all the good things. I told you about all the good things that are in the pancakes. Don't focus on the bad things. Focus on the good things, right? How about some optimism for me? It's like, I'm not optimistic enough to eat dog poo. Oh, and what are you talking about, man? This is exactly what you asked for. You asked me to take you to the movies. I'm taking you to the movies. You asked me to take you to see a rated R movie. I'm going to take you to see the rated R movie. All you got to do is eat something that you've already told me you want to eat. And I'm going to tell you I want to eat dog poo. Oh, you're just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Mike says, Owen, oh, I need you to understand something, bro. This is a parable. You told me about this movie, and you tried to convince me of all the good things that are in this movie, and just there's just a little bit of bad things in the movie, and yet when I try to talk to you about all the good things that are in these pancakes, all you can do is focus on the little bit of bad thing that's in there. Come on, dude, you see how hot this skillet is? I'm sure it's sterilized. I'm sure it's thoroughly cooked. You might not even taste it. I mean, just think about all the other things that are, that's in there. It's just a tiny, you can't even hardly see it there. I covered it up in batter. You might not even know it's going to be in there. He's like, I'm going to know. I saw you do it. Mr. Mike says, Owen, I need you to understand the lesson here, bro. See, here's the thing. Let me tell you guys a little bit about me. I didn't become a Christian until I was 32 years old. It's old, right? There's a lot of things that I watched, that I listened to, that I read. A lot of things that I brought into my life when I was your age. And I wish I hadn't now. I wish someone had taught me this lesson when I was your age. I wonder what a difference it would have made in my life. Because here's the thing I can tell you about these pancakes. You eat this stack of pancakes, it might be gross for a minute, but it's going to go past your tongue, and once it gets to here, you're not even going to notice it anymore. Well, maybe. If it comes down to your stomach and turns your stomach, it might come right back up, but eventually it's probably going to go out the back, and it's going to be gone, right? 24, 48 hours, maybe less if you vomit it back up, but it's going to go in through the mouth, and it's going to go out somewhere. It'll be gone. But that's not how it is with things that go in through your eyes or things that go in through your ears. There's certain things that I watched when I was 11 or 12 years old that I wish I had never watched now, and they're still in there. There's things I listened to when I was 11 or 12 years old that are still in there that I wish weren't in there anymore. 30 years later, they're still in there bouncing around because when something goes into your brain, the unfortunate reality is it never comes back out. How much more should you guard what goes in through your eyes and in through your ears than in through your mouth? Is there anybody here who's tempted to take my deal? You said you've taken a lot of dares before, bro. If I said I double dog dare you, would you eat them? Probably not. Why not? It's crap. <laughs> I like the term poo, but okay. <laughs> Anybody in here tempted to take my deal? Because I make this deal every class. I will take you to whatever movie you want if mom and dad agree to the deal. If um, you eat the stack of pancakes. I've seen all of them. Have you seen all of them? <laughs> so you've already eaten the poos with the telling me. No. No? <laughs> Um, like, same time, my, my brother was going to a movie, and the girl was just there, and me and my dad and my brother. Was anyone even tempted to take the deal? Um, the there isn't any. The whole stack. You got to take the good with the bad, bro. It's not really that fair. Not fair? 
I got a whole other lesson. On that. <laughs> You're not even tempted. Let me ask you: Are you tempted to watch movies that you know you shouldn't watch? Has anyone even? Not at all. Are you tempted to listen to songs you know you shouldn't listen to? Are you tempted to watch play YouTube video videos. games that you know you shouldn't play? YouTube videos. Are you right. tempted to watch things on the computer? Are you tempted to go to websites you know you shouldn't go to? Are you tempted to hit Instagram pages you know you shouldn't hit? Not at all? Are you tempted to not tempted at all? Nothing tempts you? Nothing you know better than that. Uh, yeah, I don't like social media either, but I'm tempted by plenty of other things. The bad news is the temptation never stops, guys. I'm 44 this year, and I'm still tempted to eat the pancakes. Not literally. I'm still tempted to... Deadpool! I love Marvel movies! I love the character Deadpool! I'm so tempted. There's been times I've been at Redbox, and I'm like... Or it's on, uh, it's on Netflix now, right? And I'm like, I'm 44, man! I'm past 18. I can handle it. I can deal with these things. There's nothing in there I hadn't seen before. And you know what I do every time I'm tempted to watch the movie Deadpool? I remember this lesson, and I go like this. It's still going to taste like poo. I'm still going to know the poo's in there. And I didn't watch Deadpool. 44-year-old man that won't watch a rated R movie now because I know what's in there. I know what's in there. And it doesn't matter whether I'm 44 or I'm 14 or I'm 11, there's still poo. You get it? So, this concept didn't necessarily just come from me. It comes from the Bible over and over and over again. Over and over and over again, the Bible tells us to stay away from certain things. You guys heard of the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not. Stay away from it! Thou shalt not eat pancakes full of poo! <laughs> if that was one of the Ten Commandments, would you break that one? No. <laughs> no, because the poo doesn't tempt you. It's the other things. There are, I'm sure... Actually, let me ask you. How many commandments are there? Wait. It's just a trick question. You guys know. You've been in my class. Oh, he's already talked to you. How many commandments are there? Two. Two. <laughs> no? How many commandments are there? Twelve. Eleven. One hundred. No. Roughly 613 commandments. Oh, Roughly 613 times God said, don't do this. Or do do this. Maybe I shouldn't say do do this. <laughs> <laughs> 613. There are the Ten Commandments that thou shalt not. Lots of commandments. In every single one of those cases, God is essentially saying, don't eat the pancake! Don't put the poo in! It's not good for you. You won't like it. The good won't be worth the bad. Every choice has a... Alright, you guys have been taught. That's one of my lessons of old. Every choice has a consequence. The consequence to do right generally has good consequences. The, cons the choice to uh, choose bad generally has bad. Every choice has a consequence. The book, the Bible basically is a book explaining what the things are that we ought not eat and then it's stories of people who blew it and did it and what happened, the consequences in their life. Well, one of the writers of the Bible is a guy named Paul. Do you guys study Paul at all yet? Anybody remember what he used to have a name before Paul? Saul. So Paul, Saul, Saul was a very religious dude, very into rules and the thou shalt nots, but no real relationship with God until one day Jesus basically knocks him off his horse, blinds him, and says, Knock it off, dude! You're missing the point. Saul goes through a dramatic uh, conversion experience. He becomes Paul. He becomes one of the biggest advocates and one of the greatest pastors and uh, preachers in all of history. Paul ends up in jail for what he's preaching. The Roman government didn't like it, told him to stop. He wouldn't stop. He's like, I can listen to you or I can listen to God. I think I'm going to pick God. Ends up in jail. And at the end of it, from jail, he writes letters to his friends, basically lifting them up, saying, hey, it's okay, I'm doing just fine. 
The gospel's still going out. You guys keep doing the same thing. Well, the last letter that we have that we know came from Paul is, we call it the book of Philippians. And it's probably one of my favorite books in the entire Bible. You can tell that because of all the red that's in my Bible from underlining. I absolutely love this letter that he wrote to his friends in Philippi. And he wrote it knowing, he even says in here, I'm pretty sure my life's about to end. Pretty sure I'm about to die. I think they're going to kill me. And he's thinking to himself, if I had one last opportunity to tell my friends, battle, I'll get to you in just a couple of minutes. If I had one last opportunity to tell my friends some things, what would I tell them? And the book of Philippians were the last thoughts that we know of that this guy had. And one of them is the scripture verse that I want you guys to hear today that ties into my last. Paul tells his friends, finally, last thing I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, my best friends, my family, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Is dog poo excellent? No. no. Is dog poo praiseworthy? No. Is dog poo pure? No. Pure and yuck. <laughs> then we don't want to spend all of our time in the dog poo, right? He's telling his friends, you're going to face temptations to watch certain things, to be with certain people, to do certain things, to hear certain things, to watch. I know that these temptations will come because they come to everybody. Don't let them in. Don't focus on the junk that's in this world. Don't give in to every stupid temptation that comes to you. They're not good for you. Instead, focus. Think on the good things in this world. Find the nuggets of truth in this world and cling to those. Don't be drawn to all the garbage and all the lies and all the that's out there. Those things are just going to hurt you. And that's what this lesson's about. You will be tempted to watch certain TVs. You will be tempted to hit certain websites. You will be tempted to play certain games. You will be tempted to listen to certain music. You will be tempted to read certain magazines. And you know when you do it, when that temptation comes, it's not good for me. It's not what's best for me. I want you to take one more step. When you're just about to do it, I want you to go, that's got to taste like poo. And I want you to think, would I really put this poo in my mouth? Because if I won't put that poo in my mouth, then I ought not put that poo in my brain. Instead, I'm going to look for what is noble, what is true, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable, what is excellent or praiseworthy. You going to do it? Here's what I know. You'll blow it. I blow it. We blow it. Thank God we serve a God who loves us even when we blow it. What time did you tell me to be done? 11.35. All right, I can't tell you my whole story, but do you kind of want to, you want to hear the story of why at 32 I became a Christian? This is how I know that God loves us even when we blow it. <clears throat> I was about 32 years old. Really didn't grow up in church. I sort of went to church a couple times when I was your age, but not very often. My wife was a churchgoer, and so when we moved to Nashville in 1995, we started going to church. I didn't really dig it, but uh, we started going to a different church in 96, and I started getting plugged in, and I started, you know, I would tell people I was a Christian. You're a Christian? Yep. Yep, I am. Yep. You're a Christian. I was so good at telling people this. Then eventually they made me the head of this church. I <laughs> became the president of the board of stewards. I was actually above the pastor. He had to report to me. And I was like, this is a little weird. I'm the head of a church, and I'm not sure I'm a Christian. Well, and deep down in my heart, I knew something was still missing and wrong. And uh, i got to cut this story way down because it's about a one-hour story. Mr. Jamie said, I might come back and tell you the whole story. But... There's one particular moment in my life. It was August of 2005. How many of you were even alive? That, that was my birthday. What month or what day? 24th. Oh, 
August 13th, this happened. Two weeks before you were born, this happened. And uh, I ended up at this thing called Promise Keeper. Did you guys ever even hear of it? Yeah. Uh, the mom in the room knows about it. And I was at this Promise <laughs> Keeper's event, and uh, I had volunteered to be on their prayer team which was kind of weird to me at the time. And I basically made this deal with God. I said, this was right after I had taken over as, as the head of this church. I'm like, I'm the head of a church, but I'm not sure I'm a Christian God. I need to know whether this is real or not. I need to know whether you're real or not. I need to see something. And so I started praying, and I started fasting. You guys know what fasting is, by any chance? First time I'd ever fasted in my life, I went without eating basically for two days in a row, and I just prayed and fasted for this entire two days. And the whole time I'm praying, God, I need to see something amazing from you. Well, the second day, as I was uh, showing up for this thing, this guy comes up to me. I'm walking down. You guys know where the Bridgestone Arena is? Yeah. Anybody been to the Bridgestone Arena? It used to be called the Gaylord Entertainment Center. It was when I was there. And uh, I'm walking down the road, walking down Broadway to go there, and this dude comes up, and uh, long story short, he basically is, has told me that he's running away from home, and uh, he's going to go, he's hitchhiking his way to Fort Lauderdale. He wants, he lived in Ohio his whole life, just wanted to see the ocean, and so he, everything he owned was in this bag. I'm like, wow. So, so he tells me this story, and we're walking down the road, and we come around the corner, and there's thousands of people standing there waiting to get in for this Promise Keepers event. And uh, he's like, what in the world is this? And I kind of explained to him, it was basically like a huge church service, like 18,000 people going to church all inside the Bridgestone Arena. Like a big hockey game, but a hockey game for Jesus, right? And so I'm explaining it to him, and uh, and I just asked him, it tells me his name is David McKnight. And uh, I said, David, have you ever been to church? He said, man, that's not big for me. I ain't never been to church a day in my life. As I'm talking to him, kind of a crazy thing. I actually was there last night. I went downtown to, uh, is the hockey game? Anybody watch the hockey game? I just wanted to be around it. I wasn't going to pay $1,000 for a ticket, but I just wanted to be around it. And so I'm standing in the spot last night with my daughter, and I got chills going up my spine as I'm doing it. But as I'm standing here talking to him, all these people are over here 50, 100 feet away, and there's this street preacher. You guys ever seen one of these guys on the street corners in Nashville? He's got his back to me. He's basically like, behold, the kingdom of God is near. And I'm like, ooh, okay, that's different. And I'm over here, and I'm talking to David, and I was like, man, I wish I had a ticket to get you in here. I just feel like there's something in here that you need to hear. And right after I said that, out of the corner of my eye, I see this crazy looking, think like Moses, Noah, long beard, long hair, kind of scraggly looking dude. I see him out of the corner of my eye, and he comes running towards me. You need a ticket. You need a ticket. I'll get you a ticket. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I need a ticket. And he takes off running. Uh, you know where Rippy's is, right across the street from there. He jumps in this beat up white van and comes running back to me. And he's like, here, this was for you. And I take it from him. I'm like, dude, that was weird. So I was there last night, and I actually said the same things that I said with all these people over there. You know how many people I've turned around? None. Because when there's thousands of people, you can't hear anybody when you're talking to them. It's the craziest thing. How did this? I'm holding this ticket. I'm like, dude, that's weird. This ticket's worth 100 bucks. Did that dude look like he had 100 bucks to his name? And how in the world did he just hear my voice? That's weird. So anyway, David comes in with me. I sit him down. I go back downstairs to pray with the people. And I'm like, you know, I've been with this guy. This guy. I've been praying for this guy. This guy's here. So I go back up a couple hours later, and dude's gone. He had bolted. As a matter of fact, a, a lady at the front door was holding his bag for him. Remember, I told you his bag. I was like, is, it, is his bag still here? Nope. He grabbed his bag like half an hour ago and left. I'm like, man, how did I mess this up? So I go downstairs and I'm praying. I'm like, God, you. I got my Bible in my hand. I'm sitting in this chair. I'm like, God, you've got to go get this guy. You've got to go get this guy. At one point, I even turned around. I got down on my knees and I'm like, God, I'm serious. You've got to go save this guy. He's so lost. He needs you. And I know this sounds crazy, but it's the only time in my life I ever heard the voice of God. And he said, no. And I went, no. That's not how this works. I pray and you go do stuff, right? And I hear it again, no. You want him. You get up and you go get him. <laughs> huh? I had a, I, in that moment, I had a choice, and every choice has a 
What do you think I did? I caught up. I drove around in my car, and out of a city of a million people, God led me to exactly where this dude was. Again, I'm going to convince the whole thing down. So much I got to convince them. Anyway, the next day, I end up in my church with this guy at night. And we're sitting on, I put him on the very front seat. We're facing this huge cross. And I said, David, let's just talk about some of these things. And I listed, there's all kind of crazy things that happened in this particular day. And I said, I don't know about you, but this stuff doesn't happen to me. And I said, don't you see that God is screaming your name, dude? God is calling out to you, trying to get your attention. I said, right now, we can go up to the altar. We can pray this prayer of salvation. You can be forgiven of everything you've ever done in your whole life, and you can start over. Doesn't that sound like a good deal? He's like, man, I'm not ready. I said, well, I need you to understand something. You might not be ready, but I am. I've been in this church for the last 10 years telling people I'm a Christian and knowing deep down I'm full of poo. And I said, I, I don't know about you, but I've made my decision. I'm following Jesus. Fast forward about a month. I get a letter from this guy. Oh, I'm just getting too many details. I get a letter from this guy. He had disappeared. After that night, he disappeared. Gone. I get a letter from him, and it starts out, Mike, this is David McKnight, or at least that's who I told you I was. He said, I wanted to just tell you what the real story was. He said, my name is really Charles Scholl, and that night that you met me, I was an escaped convict that had been on the run for about 27 days. And I'm like, Aah. He goes on to say <clears throat> that next morning, when you took me to the Nashville Rescue Mission, I didn't even go inside. I just walked down the street and uh, and turned myself in to the police precinct. And he said, but that night that we were at your church, you did something to me. And he said, I just wanted you to know, I've been to church every single night since then. And last night, I prayed that prayer that you taught. He said, it was like a 2,000-pound weight lifted off of my chest. It was like I could breathe for the first time. And I, I don't even know how long. Here's some things I need to tell you that, that, that I've learned. 2005, you were almost born, right? 2005, he's in jail and he had a disease called HIV AIDS. Have you guys ever heard of either HIV or AIDS? It's pretty much one of the worst diseases there is. Incurable, going to kill you. Well, he was told by the doctors that the medicine was no longer working for him, his, his health was deteriorating, his blood work was was going bad and that he was going to die within a month or two. And he decided, I'm not dying in jail. And so he escaped from jail and was going, his plan was to go to Fort Lauderdale, see the ocean once in his life, and then take his life. He said, I'm going to end my life on my terms, not this disease's terms. But along the way, he ends up in Nashville by accident. It just happens to be the same day that I'm praying for God to do something amazing for some dude who doesn't deserve it. And God brings the two of us together in this incredible story. Charles deserves to be in jail. He's probably the worst dude I've ever met in my life. Starting at age 7, he was doing drugs. By age 11, he was selling drugs and doing other things that I get in trouble if I tell you about that are so bad. He was a thief, drug dealer, murderer, Remember those Ten Commandments? I think he broke all of them. Pretty sure he broke all of them. I think he broke all 613, as a matter of fact. I haven't actually counted all of them. He's done everything wrong. Every temptation that came to this guy, woohoo! Want more pancakes? Youth, whatever it was, he's like, yep. No restraint whatsoever. Does that sound like fun? Wasn't so much fun when he got caught and ended up in jail. Wasn't so much fun when he got a disease that's incurable. Wasn't so much fun when he faced the consequences for his bad choices. That basically led to his body being destroyed, his mind being destroyed, his heart being destroyed, his life being destroyed. Every choice has a... And yet, why didn't God just let him go? Let him go to the beach. Let him finish it off. 
and ruined every bit of his life. Up to that point, he was 32 also. We're the same age. 32 years of eating poo. Just let him go. Because that's not the God we believe in. That's not the God we serve. Didn't matter how many pancakes Charles ate, God still loved him. Didn't matter how many movies, how, many, how much drugs, how much alcohol, how much thievery, how much murderousness. God still loved this guy. Didn't mean that he agreed with his choices. But God reached out to this dude and gave him one last choice. You can choose to follow me. You can choose to keep eating the pancakes. He gave me the same choice. I'm 32 years old. I'm lying to an entire church about being a Christian. I'm lying to the whole world about being Christian. I ate plenty of pancakes. Plenty. He gave me the same choice. Sitting in that chair, I had a choice to follow or not follow. And while my, I might not have ended up in jail, I might not end up with HIV, I might not have ended up with all the bad stuff that happened to him, I was on the same road to nowhere. But God reached out to me. I was 32. My grandfather was 80. Remember we talked about that parable of the workers? The parable of the workers, Jesus says, essentially that this guy owns a field, he needs some workers. He hires some people at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. They work all day. He hires some more people at noon. They work half a day. He hires some more people near the end of the day. They only work an hour. My grandfather was that dude that worked an hour. He was mean as a snake. He didn't accept Jesus until he was literally on his deathbed, and then he passed away. I was 32. I wasted 32 years of my life eating pancakes. But then I started working for him, and I always wonder, what would my life look like if I started working when I was 11, 12? I would have paid attention to that voice in my head saying, you know, you might want to do this. If I'd have followed my passions, I think maybe I would have been a teacher, I'd have been a, a pastor. What would my life look like if I'd have eaten less pancakes? If I'd have eaten less poo in the pancakes. And so I teach this lesson to you because I wish someone would have taught it to me. You get to make a choice. How bad do you want to see Deadpool? How bad do you want to see John Wick? How bad do I want to go to that website? How bad do I want to play that game? All those things are just diversions trying to keep us from doing the things that are really important in this life. The poo goes in, but the poo never comes out. What would your life look like if instead of waiting until you fell for all the same stupid things that Charles did that you started now, what would Charles's life look like if at age 10 he had been listening to God's voice? What would my life look like if at age 10 I started listening to God's voice and obeyed? What will your life look like if you start at age 10, 11, 14 listening to God's voice and doing what he tells you to do? Or you could just say forget it, I'm getting pancakes. Every choice has a consequence. Good choices generally have good consequences. Bad choices generally have bad consequences. You guys have any questions? You want to see what Charles looked like? Yeah. Took a picture of him. This was um, <laughs> Charles was in. Uh, Kentucky State Penitentiary, because after he escaped, they put him in maximum security. It just so happened that his brother, Jimmy, here was also in the maximum security prison, and so he asked me if I could pick up his parents, because they were completely disabled from, they were both drug dealers as well. They both had cancer so bad that they couldn't, barely could walk, couldn't drive, and so Charles, this is Charles up here, that's me, asked me if I could pick up his family and bring them to the state penitentiary. It was sort of like the most messed up family reunion you've ever seen in your life. Uh, his father has since passed away from all of the uh, bad things he had done to his body. His mother's on the verge. His brother, who's just a little bit older than him, is about to die as well uh, because apparently smoking crack is not good for you. Um, and then there's Charles. 
Remember how long he was supposed to live? A couple of weeks? It's 2017, 12 years later, and he's still doing all right. Because when he accepts crazy things, God can do amazing things. Here, I'll pass this around. But uh, right after he accepted Christ, his blood work reversed. It was heading this way, and then it turned, and it started heading this way. And at one point, the doctors even looked at him, looked at his lab results, and said, we know you have HIV because it never goes away, but if we didn't know it, we couldn't detect it in your bloodstream if that low you were consumptive. So you guys can pass this around. And so 12 years later, his blood work is essentially clear. Because that's what God can do if he chooses to. Some, but not as much as I wish he did. Um, because of his HIV status, he's really afraid to even tell anybody in prison about anything about his story. And uh, yeah, not as much as I would have hoped. He's in prison. He's in prison again, actually. Every choice has a consequence. He got out, and I actually picked him up and took him home uh, at one point. Well, he couldn't find a job. He couldn't find any way to make money other than selling scrap metal at the junkyard. And uh, he was making a little bit of money doing that. <clears throat> and um, one of his friends asked him to take some stuff for him to, to the junkyard. Turns out it was all stolen. <laughs> So he ended up back in jail because it's also important to make sure that you have good friends that are making good choices because sometimes their bad choices end up in your bad consequences. They, they hear that a lot in here when I say, mm -hmm. you are who you hang out with. Yep. Unfortunately, Charles made a bad choice in friends that ended up back in prison, and so he's back in prison again. All right, 1130. Uh, All right, pray for us. Yep. And then Pray. Father God Almighty, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, every boy and every girl in this room today. I pray that this lesson sticks with them the rest of their life because for the rest of their life they will have choices to make. They can choose to eat the poo and the pancake or they can choose to walk away and fill themselves with things like the fruit of the Spirit instead. I pray, Lord, that we all would make good choices because the temptation is never done. There's always something there. That, uh, that pulls us, that's trying to pull us away from our relationship with you and in the relationships with bad things. And I pray that we would make good choices to the best of our abilities. And I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus, that you came to this world, died as the sacrifice for our bad choices. You are our redemption and our pardon for those times that we blow it. Thank you that you love us even when we blow it, that there's never so much blowing it that that we can lose your love, Lord, if we will just repent and turn around, turn away from that thing and come back to you, you're always there because you are a good, good father. Thank you for that, Lord. Help us. We pray in the name of